This is uh, my friend's solar uh, panel system. He has, he put on his house, which is, uh, this is facing the south. He has about 30 panels. He got it from a place called Sunplow, Sunpower. And uh, he says that it's, I think he said it was the E20. Uh, I'm not an expert in uh, solar power, but it looks like a good system. He's hooked, he, he has them on the top of his roof. Uh, they hook on to the, those metal strips on the roof with these special clamps. Uh, and they're uh, guaranteed, I, I understand he said, for at least 20 years, which should be the life of the system. You can see there is some, sometimes there's shadows on them from the chimneys, some of that block it. It's not the ideal uh, house to put a, a solar power system on, but it seems to work uh, fairly well. Now, the system comes with the solar panels, and then the power goes, this apparently generates DC power. This goes into the basement into an inverter, which converts it into AC, and also matches up the sine waves to the municipal power, so that it's able to mix it with the municipal power. And then when you're not using that much power, and it's creating more than what you're using, it back feeds it into the utility and you get a credit for it. Uh, it basically banks your credits and it offsets your actual use. So if you're creating more power at one time, you feed it back into the system and then when you're using more power, you can use more power and you get a credit based upon what you banked in. So here he has it, he's put the wires through the roof. Uh, you can't see any wires hanging down. It all goes through the roof, through the house, into the basement. Now, from the basement, it feeds back up into this system. And what you have over here is uh, a shutoff switch. Uh, this is where it's feeding up from the basement. It comes up. AC comes up here. You can shut it off in an emergency. And then that feeds into here, which connects to the utility power. And the power, uh, the power can, uh, it's the same power. In other words, the, the power created by the uh, inverter matches the power by the, created by the utility. And it feeds back in through this meter. It's called net metering. It's a special uh, meter. And what it does is it, you can see over here, it says 849. That's the net amount of kilowatt hours delivered to his house. A little difficult to see with the light. Uh, it says, hold on, 849. So that's the net amount of kilowatt hours that he's used. And uh, like I said, when he's using more power than what's created, it feeds back up through the utility, back up to uh, LIPA. And when you're using more, then it draws it back down. The interesting thing is, before they put in this meter, he had the old meter. And he said that when he was generating more power than he was using, the wheel was spinning backwards. But the dials would not spin backwards. It wouldn't give him credit. Basically, it's probably those old meters, they have the anti-theft uh, 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 type of thing where you can't spin those meters backwards. So after you put in this system, uh, the power company comes and puts in this net metering system to give you credit for your use. Well, let's look in the basement and we'll take a look at his uh, inverter. Okay, here we are in the basement, and the light's pretty good here. Uh, this is the inverter. I'll pull back so you could see it. Okay, and it seems that I'm not sure which direction power is coming from or going to. My guess is this right side here is coming from the roof. That's my guess because I don't think this is big enough. Uh, 
if this were AC, but I'm not sure. Um, this is coming from the roof, the DC. It goes into the inverter, and the inverter conver converts it to AC, and that goes back out. Actually, this sign over here says, well, danger of electrocution, 600 volts DC. So maybe it feeds through this way, and then goes up AC. But either way, you can see the system now. He's been generating, uh, I've seen on the, uh, it's based, it, you can monitor this on the website, on the internet. Uh, you can see over here, this device, it says PV supervisor, sun power monitoring system. There's a network cable here. So basically it's like a little uh, network box. It hooks up to his network and then feeds through over the internet. You can monitor the, the uh, power generation in real time. Now this is really a beast of a box. It, uh, it has these air filters apparently in the back. I don't know if you can see. Three of them. It, uh, it's making some noise. It's, uh, it has fans. And it's giving off uh, some pretty warm air, I would say, in the 80s. And the box itself is warm, probably about 80 degrees. And the question is, uh, will this last in the long term? That's my question. I, I hope the system's reliable. He said that the, the panels have a uh, warranty on parts and labor for 20 years. He bought some very good panels. And this device, the um, inverter, has a warranty for 10 years. Uh, it, it almost seems like a computer. I hope it lasts in the long term. Uh, a, apparently, it's a Sun Power. It could be the SPR. Let's show you that. There's the booklet for it. It's got fuses and all kinds of things. Uh, I was monitoring his power uh, production, and on a good day, he was making, he was generating about 45 kilowatt hours a day. Uh, and so it's going to take a long time to break even on this, uh, but that's on a good day. You know, if it's a cloudy day, you're only generating uh, like about 20 kilowatt hours for the day. Uh, and interestingly, when it's very hot out, you know, you think it's a very hot sunny day, that's an excellent day for power generation. Nope. The heat from the sun actually uh, interferes with the power generation. So he's only developing on those very hot days around 30 or so kilowatt hours for the day. Uh, basically the best days are the days where it's sunny uh, but cool. If the panels are cool, they're generating much more electricity. Now it, it was a sunny day outside, not that hot. So it's pretty optimal in terms of power generation. And you can see over here, we'll zoom in. Right now he's generating uh, 8,000 watts. Uh, which is 8 kilowatts. And that's actually quite impressive. Uh, if you think about it, if you look at my other videos, I, I mean, you see what, how much energy it takes to make um, uh, 7,500 watts. And my other generator, the portable generator, I was burning natural gas. I was making 7,500 watts. And you see how, how much power that takes, how much heat that generates. Uh, I know that's natural gas, but... Uh, you know, to compare it to the sun, it's actually, the system is actually quite impressive. Uh, of course, burning natural gas, you get power all the time. Here you're generating power roughly from only approximately 10 o'clock a.m. until about 2 p.m. Not a lot of time. If it rains in the morning, you're not, you're not getting much power for the day. And I don't know what's down here. It's some kind of thing. If it were mine, I would play with it, but the last thing I want to do is... Uh, break my friend's solar panel system. Oh yeah, actually there's something you can see under here. Let's see if I can capture that, what that is. Um, take a look around. Let's see. Press the buttons, menu, menu,
Hmm. I don't want to mess with it. Um, so it looks like he's generating about 8 kilowatts, which is very good. Um, now, uh, these systems are actually quite expensive, um, but uh, what basically what you do is you find a provider who can put it in, you evaluate whether it makes sense to do so, and I really think you have to really think carefully about whether this is worth it. You know, and you can't just rely on what they say you're going to generate, because every bad day, <clears throat> every... Uh, overcast day, every time the sun can't come out, you're not generating power. And you have this responsibility on your roof, uh, you know, you can't do a roof repair if you have these panels up. You'd have to remove the panels. So you'd want to put it on a new roof. And then the question is, do you want to drill holes in your roof to put these on? Do you need to drill holes in, in your roof? You, you really want to ask these questions. Um, now, solar power generally doesn't pay for itself, but uh, thanks to our government's uh, unlimited ability to print money, they can offer incentives uh, for you to uh, buy these systems. And basically with the federal rebates, the uh, state rebates, local rebates, uh, it starts to make economic sense in the long term to put in these systems. Uh, my friend hopes in about, it says in about seven years, he should break even with it. And then uh, it's just uh, a credit every year after that, hopefully for about 20 years or so. The other question is the long-term maintenance of these systems. Uh, will this system last in the long term? Is it reliable? Um, you know, my question really is, I think the solar panels are very reliable. Uh, I have a question about this inverter. It seems to be doing a lot of work and producing a fair amount of heat. Uh, I don't really know what it would cost to replace this thing. Um, but uh, you should ask that question, and you want to know how long it's going to last. And that's it. I'll give you one last shot of the menu. Hit the button, menu. Huh. Now, day, year, total. Let's see what total says. 1.47 megawatt. Six ninety one USD. I don't know what that is. Nineteen thirteen pounds of CO two. Ten thousand two hundred twenty six watts. It's a total. He's had this for about two months. I think they put it up about two months ago. Two hundred eighty four volts. Maximum three hundred twenty volts. I don't know. Let's see what else. Menu. Uh, let's see what setup is. I don't want to mess this up. Now, the other thing is, um, the other thing you need to know is, in a blackout, let's put it back to now. Okay, I don't want to mess with this. But the other thing to know is, uh, this does not store electricity. In other words, when you generate electricity, you're feeding it back to the uh, elect electricity, your electricity provider, in this case, LIPA. But you're not storing electricity. And the thing is, in a blackout, uh, what, what this does is, this will just shut off. This is not going to convert solar power into power you can use in a blackout. If this senses that there's no utility power, it is going to shut off. Um, and you're not going to get any power. So the only thing you can do is, you could have a battery bank here, a lot of basically car batteries here. And that would store the electricity, and then you can use that in a blackout, or you could use it directly. You could store it, not send it back to the to the to LIPA, and store it directly. I don't know what benefit that is. I think LIPA is giving you the, the credit per hour, um, but uh, at least in a blackout you would have power. Um, but but that's expensive. And the truth is, who wants to store all these battery batteries in your house? And then they break, you know, they die after a couple of years. So you can't store the power. In a blackout, you have absolutely no power. Everything shuts down. Uh, what, some, what someone has said, though, is what you could do is, if you do have a portable generator, even a small portable generator, and you feed it into the system, uh, basically before this system, uh, what will happen is, at least if you're feeding some sort of... Uh, uh, AC power into the system, this will be fooled into thinking that in a blackout, 
this will be fooled into thinking that you have that they want, you have line power because it can't tell the difference. It'll it would then work. It would turn on and then convert the DC into an a, the same AC that's being created by your power by your portable generator, and this could then help you power your whole house in a blackout. Now that could be done. It gets complicated. Um, I really don't recommend that. I recommend a whole house generator, and you can see my ha my uh, my other videos on that. But you can see it uh, it varies why. Uh, widely. At one point before it was at 4 kilowatts, now it's at... But uh, this is really the peak time of the day. It's about uh, 12 o'clock and it's generating a good almost 8 kilowatts. That's it. But it is actually making a certain amount of noise. You can hear the fans really working to get the heat out of this baby. I'll put this close. One up there, one up down there, and one down there.